Uh, thanks so much, Greg, and uh, thanks so much to my Loma crowd for giving me the opportunity to speak. So what I will try to do in uh, the next 20 minutes is really address some of the questions which I'm frequently asked during the first uh, consultations on transplant and um, use those as a point for further discussion. So obviously the first question is, does transplant still play a role for newly diagnosed patients? Um, is there value in maintenance treatment? What is the role of consolidation? Does it make sense to do a second transplant? Since this is auto-transplant, uh, is there a risk of uh, reintroducing tumor cells into the patients <laughs> after transplant? And uh, very briefly, um, at the end, uh, is there a role for allotransplant? <clears throat> so uh, the first question I think is the most pressing one given the, um, uh, the major uh, you know, breakthrough development over the last uh, two decades in myeloma, is there still a role for transplant? And obviously everything really dates back to the mid-90s when autotransplant was uh, introduced. And just using here the, um, the IFM90 protocol as a perspective, which really showed the value of autotransplant, you have to compare here that the uh, uh, achievement of a complete response in the standard arm was 5%, <coughs> right? So this is just puts into perspective, you know, how uh, really desperate the situation was in the 90s, when 95% of the patients did not respond to any treatment, more or less, in terms of a complete response. And uh, transplant alone really did have, uh, at that time, a CR rate of about 20%. Um, and this study really obviously showed the, uh, the benefit of doing a transplant in terms of uh, overall survival, uh, of course, also progression-free survival, and this was not only seen by the French group, but also by the MRC. So these were the studies which uh, were published in 96, and which did demonstrate that autotransplant is the standard of care for newly diagnosed myeloma, and that high-dose malfolan is the most potent drug around to, uh, to treat um, a myeloma. So, you know, fast forward now to, um, Nowadays, here at IFM 2009, given the fact that uh, the triplet combinations we have with lenalidomide, bortezomib, and dexamethadone achieve CR rates which even exceed what we've seen with transplant to, uh, to some extent, uh, it was a timely, uh, 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 it was a time to really to compare, does transplant pl still play a role? And so that was the, the trial which was uh, presented initially in ASH and then published in the New England Journal in 2017, comparing VRD followed by collection of stem cells and then patients went on to collect, uh, to, to either continuous VRD or go to transplant, receive uh, consolidation and then go on to maintenance. And uh, I think that trial, um, am I loud enough or is it, um, you need the mic. Yeah. No, it's going to be right. You, you need the so, mic. So, the mic? Yeah. Yeah, closer to the mic. If you okay, all right. Or so you can, if you want to stand, I can give you this. Yeah, it's better to see if you need. Does that work? Yeah, does it work? Yes. 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 Okay. Sorry. So, um, yeah, so you see here, the I think the most important take home messages are really listed here in that slide, comparing VRD alone versus VRD and transplant. And you see here that there's an increase in overall response rates again. Uh, CR rate is better with uh, transplant. And I think what becomes more and more relevant, and I think probably as Dr. Uh, Nisbitsky uh, showed in the morning, is that um, MRD, I think, is a very important endpoint in, uh, in treatment. So you could make from that case, from those results, the case really that transplant mm -hmm. is still very potent, despite the fact that you have you know, a very uh, um, effective uh, combination of drugs here, which lead to basically similar outcomes in terms of, it's, at this point, of overall survival. However, progression-free survival still is, uh, is, is better in the transplant group compared to the VRD uh, group. So from that perspective, in our center, we still believe that upfront transplant is the standard of care. Uh, mm -hmm. Also given that this gives you the best chance of getting the deepest possible response. <clears throat> and uh, therefore that is, from our, our perspective, the absolute uh, answer to that question. So what about maintenance treatment? So there have been a number of trials done in the past. I think the definitive trial really was conducted uh, by the uh, 
by the EPOC uh, of the CLGB group here, Intel group, um, comparing placebo versus lenalidomide after transplant. So patients were randomized to either receive uh, lenalidomide until progression or receive the placebo. <coughs> and uh, this trial was particularly impressive in terms of um, demonstrating not only a progression-free survival benefit, basically leading to a doubling of uh, uh, progression-free survival, um, uh, but also benefit in terms of overall survival. So showing that ongoing control of the disease even after a transplant is important. And um, a recently published meta-analysis really confirmed those results of a number of uh, different trials and showing that about 25% um, reduction in death due to maintenance treatment and an estimated increase in, in survival, overall survival of two and a half years, showing that maintenance with a basically relative non-toxic or I think fairly well tolerated approach is further adding on to the benefit from transplant. So this is really then um, more or less reflected here when you look at the SMART guidelines from the Mayo Clinic, which really basically shows the, the algorithm which, um, <clears throat> uh, which we follow that uh, patients get induction chemotherapy, high-risk patients uh, receive a more aggressive approach with KRD, followed by transplant, and then followed by, uh, by maintenance treatment. One important question which um, is, um, I think, still up in the air, is what is the role of consolidation treatment after the transplant? And um, so there we have the results from the, uh, the BMT, from the bone marrow transplant uh, clinical trials network, which conducted the, uh, the stamina trial, which um, uh, basically compared patients receiving Malphalan 200 to then either receiving maintenance with lenalidomide, VRD, or a second autotransplant, and then followed by maintenance. And there, the results were somewhat disappointing that there was no difference really at this point in terms of progression-free survival um, and, um, and overall survival. So obviously at this point, there's no data really in terms of depth, depth of response. So that's something which will, I think, require further workup to really see which patients benefited from the different modalities as consolidation. However, although this is not randomized, there is again evidence, of course, to show that you know, if you intensify the treatment after transplant, you do increase the, the, the depth of the response. And this is a trial here, and this is a, a, a trial which uh, was not randomized, but compared different trials, looking here at patients who received KRD with transplant or KRD alone. And when you just look here at the group receiving <coughs> eight, uh, eight cycles of KRD, so four cycles before transplant, and then another four cycles after transplant, compared to the patients who received eight cycles of KRD alone without the transplant, you see here, especially the patients with the stringent CR are significantly higher, showing again that if you intensify the treatment after transplant, you do get deeper responses. And as we know so far, again, depth of response does matter. So therefore, our um, conclusion from those results is that obviously, this trial, those results should be confirmed in a prospective trial to really show what is the best approach in, in a risk-adapted way. So depending on the remission status after transplant, because you could make the case that if a patient already has an MRD negative CR after transplant, do you still need a consolidation versus just maintenance treatment? I mean, I think these are questions which are currently really unanswered. That's something which we we'll go in a little later, perhaps, during the discussion. So, but from those results, again, our take-home message would be that uh, at this point, based on randomized study, consolidation has not been conclusively shown to be of benefit after transplant, but that patients who may not have achieved the best re response after transplant may benefit from more intensive treatment. So another question which always comes up, and uh, as you are aware, when you initially have the first discussion with a transplanter, that the transplant will tell you, we're always trying to collect enough stem cells for two transplant, given that there may be a benefit of, uh, of doing a second transplant. And so what is actually the most recent data? And um, there was one paper which was published recently in the Lancet Hematology, which again looked at that uh, uh, question with longer follow-up. So patients who had relapsed after a first transplant were, uh, 
received all uh, established therapy, which at that point was bortezomib, uh, uh, um, <coughs> uh, adriamycin, and dexamethasone, and then were either randomized to a second transplant or VP cytoxan. And here again, the outcome was pretty clear that the patients who received uh, the transplant did a lot better than the patients who received standard treatment. So, and most of those patients here were all patients who had relapsed 18 months or later, or even 24 months or later after the first transplant. So I think this data also clearly demonstrates that a second transplant does make sense if the patient had initial uh, um, good response and should be uh, absolutely, even at this point, clearly uh, uh, considered. I think another important um, consideration from, from those studies, from, both, from that study, and I don't have the data here, show that if you then do the transplant at third relapse, the response may not be as good as here at first or second relapse. So that the value of the second transplant really also is probably stronger at the earlier time of relapse following the first transplant. Um, so, one question which also always comes up, we're doing autotransplants, and so we are removing stem cells from a patient who has myeloma. So is there a risk that we are reintroducing um, uh, tumor cells into the patient, and does that have any um, impact on outcome? And so there are a number of approaches, approaches. this was especially studied in the 90s, um, there are different approaches available or were available to try to eliminate uh, uh, tumor cells from the, uh, from the transplant. The one which uh, then was studied in, in clinical trials was a method which was not relying on directly removing the tumor cell, but basically positively selecting the stem cells, thereby negatively depleting the tumor cells. And uh, the, um, the approach which was uh, at that time used was uh, what is called the biotin evidin or C-PRAID system, which is no longer uh, available. Nowadays, we're using here the, the Filamex uh, uh, device, which is a neuromagnetic approach. But the studies which are published use the biotin evidin approach. And um, this shows you here the, the, the punchline of that trial, overall survival between arm A, which was the CD34 group, and control arm was not significantly different. So at that time, we can say cleaning up the graft, purging the graft, did not make any difference. However, of course, we have to remember those were studies which were done starting in the 90s. Where this time, when, I, when you remember the first slide I showed you about transplant, complete response rates of patients going into transplants were very low. Mm -hmm. So that those patients still had lots of myeloma on board when they went to transplant. This, of course, is different now. Right? So now you may have significant amount of patients who go to transplant who are in CR or BGPR. So this question in my eyes could again of course be of relevance as we now have patients who are in CR and it may be worthwhile to really look at that again. Is there any benefit or is there any signal if we let's say reintroduce tumor cells into, the, into uh, patients? And this could be done using the MRD testing. We could you know, analyze the, the, uh, the stem cell products. Are there myeloma cells detectable and would they have any outcome? An impact on outcome. And uh, finally, um, is there a role for allogeneic transplant? And I think this is probably the most controversial part of uh, discussion, and the short answer is nobody knows, and probably not at this point. Um, however, um, the, um, when you look at the trends here, just in utilization of transplant, this is data from the EBMT, which was published two years ago looking at you know, how allotransplant is being used. And um, the allotransplant overall makes sense for myeloma because they have the documented graft versus myeloma effect. So this is clearly documented in patients who have relapsed after initial transplant and receive what is called donor lymphocyte infusion, but you only gave back the lymphocytes of the donor to the patient who had relapsed after an allogeneic transplant. And that was the rationale really why upfront transplant was considered. And that data, you know, however, was associated with a significant amount of treatment-related mortality, even up to 50%, just due to transplant-related mortality. And therefore, as you can see here, the trend is that this upfront transplant really is no longer being considered in most of the, uh, the, the cases. Then there was the approach of combining an order with an allotransplant with the idea of 
first removing uh, the amount of tumor burden in the patient with an autotransplant and then following up with what is called a reduced intensity or non-ablative uh, transplant approach with the idea of just having the immune system uh, work against the myeloma. And you see here again, this was, in, uh, the, the, this was fashionable in the, in the 2000s, but is no longer, given the negative results from the studies which have come out so far, is no longer being uh, followed. However, what is at the moment still increasing, which is very interesting in Europe, is uh, allotransplant for uh, patients at a later time point in, in relapse when there are probably no other options left. However, when you just look at the, um, and this just breaks it down based on the different countries in Europe which participated uh, in those uh, studies, and you see that there is obviously some difference also in, in terms of, uh, let's say, utilization of the different transplant approaches. However, which um, is in my eyes the reason why I personally don't think that allotransplant should be considered outside of a clinical trial is you still have here non-relapse mortality of basically almost 40%. And therefore, at this point, I think, in the setting outside of a clinical trial, an allotransplant should not be considered. That's, that's my answer to that question. Um, so I hope that, um, um, and this basically holds true throughout the different scenarios, basically. Right, so later transplant, somewhat lower uh, treatment rate mortality if you do the combination of auto-allo, however, which may not be the most appropriate uh, uh, treatment approach in patients uh, who have aggressive disease. So I think a 40% or uh, between 20 and 40% treatment rate mortality in my eyes is very difficult to justify at this point uh, in myeloma. And it is not a disease like an acute myelogenous leukemia where you have perhaps a you know, three months median survival where I think it really makes a major difference whether you cure the patient or not. This is uh, different here. Doctors, so, but won't there be a time soon when uh, we won't reject the uh, allergenic our bodies can be able to handle it? So let's put it that way. So I think, and, and, and I think that will be the ideal segue to Dr. Rochef's talk, but I think there are much more, I think, elegant ways of now to try to harness the strength of the immune system. Because at the end of the day, the whole concept of the allotransplant is that the donor cells recognize the recipient is foreign, and this graft versus host response also translates into a graft versus myeloma effect, and thereby kills the, the disease. That is the hope. Uh, however, you usually, it's, at the moment, it has not been really achievable of separating this graft versus host disease from the graft versus uh, malignancy effect. And that is the major challenge. And therefore, I think, based on the, the new data with uh, the, uh, the primary antigen receptor T cells, you are able to really direct the immune cell, the T cell response directly against the tumor cells. So in my eyes, with a potentially significantly lower toxicity. I mean, there's still toxicity, and Dr. Rochef will go into that, but I think this is probably, at this point, in my eyes, the better option than considering an allotransplant. And um, so, yeah, so I hope that I was able to answer the question which I uh, started at the beginning. So, um, is there a role for autotransplant? Yes. Maintenance? Absolutely yes. Consolidation? We don't really know at this point. <coughs> may depend on the remission status after transplant. Is there a role for second transplant? Yes, especially if the patient is uh, um, in remission for more than 18 months. Purging of autograft? No. However, I think this may be worthwhile to revisit those results. And is there a role of allogeneic transplants? Perhaps for selected patients, but in principle, I, I would not necessarily consider that outside of the clinical context. <coughs>